sacred story shared with others form a faith as strong and true sacred places etched with meaning bringing hope and joy anew sacred memory sacred future sacred present here and now sacred knowing sacred being sacred living be our vow sacred story shared with strangers sacred stories shared with friends sacred stories bind us closely shaped by ties that will not end sacred waters of baptism sacred bread and sacred wine sacred humans sacred living with god's purpose we still shine please be seated will you join me in a moment of prayer May these words, offered with humility and hope, draw us closer to you, O God, and one another. Amen. If you've looked in your Lent bag that you received, you will know that there was some Play-Doh in it. We put it in there along with the words for this week. There are stories that shape our lives. You will also know that the Play-Doh is the consistency of rock today, <laughs> right? <laughs> that wasn't our intent. <laughs> but isn't that also true? Sometimes we think our stories are fixed and unchanging. Our intent was for you to play with the Play-Doh, to shape it, to imagine all the things that have shaped your life so far and formed you into what you are today, and also to imagine what shape you might like your life to be in the future. Brene Brown says, owning your story and loving ourselves through that process is the bravest thing we will ever do. Imagine what shape the next, sta the next stage of Stair's life will be. What stories will we live out? In our scripture reading this morning, we have two stories. A story about blind men and a story about a mute demoniac. Let's listen as the stories unfold as written in Matthew's gospel in the ninth chapter. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him crying loudly, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he entered the home, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. He then touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their eyes were opened, then Jesus sternly ordered them, see that no one knows of this. But they went away and spread the news about him throughout that district. After they had gone away, a demonic who was mute was brought to him. And when the demon had been cast out, the one who had been mute spoke. And the crowds were amazed and said, Never has anything like this been seen in Israel. These stories are different, although both are healing stories. And while I'm going to touch on both of them, I'm going to concentrate on the second one. Because this week our focus is on mental health. First of all, the healing of the blind men. Kathy Black observes the words blind and blindness are among the most common terms in our religious vocabulary. 
Yet such terms are most often used in a negative con with negative connotations, usually in, re refer in reference to our refusal to obey or to pay attention to what God's will is for our lives. The presence of persons who are blind in our congregations or communities seems to go unnoticed as pastors continually use blind and blindness as metaphors for living in some state of sin. She goes on to say that there's a certain irony that presents itself then, then in as far as the two men can be understood to signify discipleship more effectively before they are healed than after they are healed. Because before they are healed, they seem to recognize Jesus, even though they can't see them. He, they can't see him. After they are healed, they disobey him. They go and tell everybody, even though Jesus tells them not to. And I'm sure that I have used those words, if not in a sermon, at least in conversation, asking the question, what are we blind to? Moving on to the second part of the reading, the healing of the demoniac. Now, this man could have been suffering from any number of mental health issues, and it is said that he was mute. Metaphorically speaking, as a society and as a church, we have been encouraged to be mute about mental health issues. Last week, I sent an email inviting you to share a story about living with or dealing with mental health issues. And according to the Canadian Mental Health Association, in any given year, one in five people in Canada will personally experience a mental health problem or illness. Mental health issues affect Canadians of all ages, education levels, income, and cultures. And approximately 8% of Canadians will suffer a major depression at some point in their lives. So if one in five people will experience a mental health issue in any given year, and let's face it, this past year has taxed us beyond measure, right? We are, this Sunday was our last normal Sunday last year. So how, and so how many people are here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So if there's 22 of us here, then at least four of us have experienced some sort of mental health issue in this past year. And yet all but one of you were mute on the subject when I asked. I wonder why. Is it because of that same stigma that still surrounds mental health issues? Susan Colasar shared some thoughts with me, and she focused on two things, on, on, one on relationships and one on the ongoing dealing with living with a mental health issue. So she says, people need to be comfortable with you as you are, or just at least letting you know that it's okay. She asks for compassion. Imagine what it's like to walk in somebody else's shoes. Imagine what it's like when you, can't feel, when you feel like you can't control your own thinking. Healings, healing often comes slowly. It's tough learning to take one step at a time. Year after year, the frustration of an illness that hangs on or returns after a period of, of when you've been fine for a while. She says, remind me that I will be fine again. She also says, it's a relief to connect with other people like me who have been there. If I'm upset or down, they have been there too. I benefit from a weekly social group where we do everything about, except talk about our health. I've received encouragement from others in church who have their own struggles with mental health. She's working to, towards something new instead of back to normal. And then she goes on to say, when we're working together, remember this. Change is hard and scary. Taking responsibility is scary. 
I feel like I've let myself and others down before. Shared responsibility is more doable and more realistic. Sharing responsibility leads to developing relationships. Also, with more people involved, there is less, pre less pressure, better results, and maybe even fun. Let me be needed, but not necessary. Reject working for perfection and recognize beauty in diversity. Well, Susan, I know you're watching on Zoom. Some of your words describe what church could be at its best. Shared responsibility, rejecting perfection, recognizing beauty in diversity. Working towards something new, something better, instead of back to normal. Jesus is always calling us to something new, something better, not back to what was. Jesus casts out the demon, and the man was able to tell his story. And the crowds, the crowds were amazed at Jesus. What we need to be careful about with this story is oversimplifying it, because healing stories have been used as weapons when they are linked with having enough faith. We all know people who have great faith. But that doesn't protect them from accident or illness, mental health illness included. And we must make the distinction between healing and cure. For there can be healing without cure. Healing can be restoration to community. Sometimes that might mean cure. Sometimes that means acceptance. Sometimes that might mean something else. For me, healing means owning your story, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and knowing that you are a beloved child of God, no matter what. And that doesn't mean that you don't seek out as much healing as possible. Therapy, medication, art, music, dance, walking the beach, gathering beach glass. Your story is what makes you, you. It's a sacred story. Is it this story? Hard? Unchangeable? <laughs> Surprised you, didn't I? <laughs> or is it this story? Is it this story that we are shaping? Are we soft and pliable? Thanks be to God for the challenge and the opportunity of shaping a new story with Jesus at the center. Amen. The readings today and the, the context of our worship led me to want to create a new song for us today. Uh, and the song is called uh, Teach Me How to Fly. And it uh, talks about how God will be a rock for us and who will help to build, uh, build us up, build our wings to help us fly. And it references uh, Peter's uh, comments uh, in uh, Peter 1, chapter 5, where he says that after a time of suffering, God in all her grace will lead you on your way to restore and to strengthen you, healing you today. Rely on God's grace to heal you, Peter says. And in the end, God will teach us how to fly. God will help you tell your untold story and show you how to find your glory. In this particular song, I'm using God in the female uh, pronouns.
Ask God to be a rock for you to lean on, help to build your wings and let you fly. Open up and let God point you to the sky, and she will teach you how to fly. Peter says that after your time of suffering, God in all her grace will lead you on your way to restore, confirm, strength, and then heal, healing you today. Ask God to be a rock for you to lean on and help you to see deep down inside yourself and reach your center and your strength and she will teach you how to fly. She will help you tell your untold story and show you how to find your glory. She will help you tell your untold story and show you how to find your glory. Ask God to be a rock for you to lean on, help to build your wings and let you fly. Open up and let God point you to the sky and she will teach you how to fly. Ask God to be a rock for you to lean on and help you to see deep down inside yourself and teach your center and your strength and she will teach you how to fly. She will help you tell your untold story and show you how to find your glory. She will help you tell your story, show you how to find your glory. She will teach you how to fly. She will teach you how to fly. How to fly. How to fly.
in your love make us whole. May we rest in your compassion. Come the lost, weary soul in the warmth of your love. May your peace fill our hearts. May you know the love of Jesus. By your grace, you console, make us holy, make us whole. Let us come together as a community of faith and prayer. healer of our every ill, especially this stigmatized fear of mental illness, we come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us, showing us the way to recovery. You have stamped each one of us as worthy. We give you thanks that your mercy is wide and your faithfulness to us does not, does not depend upon having our feelings sorted out or our sense of well-being secure. You are not waiting for us to get our act together before offering us your love and grace. We pray especially for those who have experienced heightened and acute mental and emotional difficulties as a result of this past year of isolation and fear. We pray for those who feel far from hope, and we mourn those who could not find a lifeline to survive this hardship. We pray for those who find themselves without access to adequate care or appropriate resources to steady their hearts and minds. We give thanks for those who are telling their stories, showing us how to open our hearts to help others and offering ripples of healing in the community. We pray grateful thanks for progress towards holistic health care and the efforts of all who are working to destigmatize mental illness, making it easier to ask for and get the help so desperately needed. We ask for courage and encouragement to ask how we can help now and into the future. We pray this day for our world, O oh God, as the first anniversary of the pandemic rapidly approaches. We pray that vaccines are delivered to where they are needed the most. We pray that we stay steadfast in our protecting of one another with the simple acts of washing our hands, wearing a mask, and physical distancing. It's so hard, O oh God, to keep that distance when we are meant to foregathering together, being close to one another. But no matter what, we can draw close to you, who loves us like a mother, and to whom Jesus prayed, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 
in your love make us whole may we rest in your compassion calm the lost weary soul in the warmth of your love may your peace fill our hearts may we know the love of jesus by your grace you console make us holy The words of Jesus that we heard in this week's healing story was, Do you believe I am able to do this? Jesus' question invites us to consider our own belief in transformation. He invites us to step into a new vision of our lives, to speak a new story, not to be bound by the stories of the past, not to be bound by the stories that were inscribed on us by others, stories that may be oppressing or limiting us. Beach glass is usually somewhat cloudy when it's dry, right? But if, when you add water to it, it becomes shining and clear. Look at that. May that beach glass be a prayer for clarity. Ask for a new way of seeing your struggles. Ask for understanding and a way forward. Ask for prayers for clarity for others who may be experiencing struggles. When you go home, take that piece of beach glass that was in your Lent bag and put it into some water, and notice how clear it becomes, how shining it becomes. Keep it handy as a reminder of the clarity that Jesus can bring to each one of us. Our closing song is When Jesus the Healer. I'm going to invite you to stand and hum along. When Jesus the healer passed through Galilee, heal us, heal us today. The deaf came to hear and the blind came to see. Heal us, O oh Jesus. A paralyzed man was let down through the roof. Heal us, heal us today. His sins were forgiven, his walking the proof. Heal us, O oh Jesus. The death of his daughter called Jairus to weep. Heal us, heal us today. Then Christ took her hand and he raised her from sleep. Heal us, O oh Jesus. When blind Bartimaeus cried out to the Lord, Heal us, heal us today. His faith made him whole, and his sight was restored. Heal us, O oh Jesus. The lepers were healed, and the demons cast out. Heal us, heal us today. A bent woman straightened to laugh and to shout. Heal us, O oh Jesus. The twelve were commissioned and sent out in twos. Heal us, heal us today, to make the sick whole and to spread the good news. Heal us, O oh Jesus. There's still too much sickness and suffering today. 
heal us, heal us today. We gather together for healing and pray. Heal us, O oh Jesus. Try that again. Each week, we look at the reaction of the crowd in the healing story. This week, the crowd was amazed and cried out that nothing like it had been seen before. How interesting that the crowd is seeing something for the first time, just like the blind man is brought to sight. Could it be that this is as important in the story as the ones who receive physical healing? How can we open our eyes figuratively in new ways? What do we need to envision anew? Did you know that mental health and addiction services are being moved out of North Dartmouth? Did you know that? Moved to right around where the Portland Hills Metro Transit Terminal is, making it much more difficult for people in our neighborhood to access those resources. Susan LeBlanc, the MLA for this area, is circulating petitions to stop this from happening. There's one on the table for you to sign if you would like to on the way out. As you all know, who have been part of this faith community and part of this neighborhood for a number of years, this is a, an, an area that has the highest immigration rates, uh, some of the lowest income. Why make it more difficult to access resources? Why make it more difficult? So I invite you to sign that if you feel so inclined on the way out. Go with confidence, because the one who is living water is already cleansing and renewing, clarifying our lives, recovering our depth of love for each person, and our joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears. Do you believe? It is possible. And may the Spirit hover and move and deliver healing to your soul and a spring in your step. Amen. a couple of announcements before we leave. Um, in your Lent bags was this little canvas. I invite you to draw something on it, to just draw one color on it, to make a design on it. No, doesn't matter what. I am not artistic. <laughs> Trust me, I am not. I, I'm, I'm great with paint by number. <laughs> um, whatever you want to do on it, and then bring it back in. And um, Jesse and I are going to create something for Easter Sunday morning with it. We're not sure exactly how, but we want to use these to create something, a community art project with this. So bring them back by the 24th so that we have time to do this. The other thing is thanks to those of you who have already agreed to make a pie for our pie event. So pie stands for Public Intentional Explicit Support of LGBTQ. We're auctioning off some pies uh, just through a Facebook event, not a Facebook live event. I'm not doing a live auction. That just scares me. <laughs> scares me too much to try. Um, but we're going to have it going for about a week. Uh, so thanks to those who have already agreed to make pies for that. And uh, 
we'll auction off as many pies as um, you folks want to bake. So there's room for more if you want to do those. Um, so just let me know. And I think LJ has one announcement he wants to make. And I would invite you to use that mic up there because I wiped it off. <laughs> Over the past year, Byron has done an amazing job of um, meeting the challenges that COVID-19 has presented our our congregation when we were worshiping um, by distance through Zoom, coming back in the sanctuary, going back to Zoom, coming back in uh, without a choir. He's been leading us through the music and uh, uh, the, the music part of our worship. And I just want to express our deep appreciation to you, Byron. And I have a gift for you from the congregation. Go with God. Remember to keep your distance on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> 